Welcome to Mastering Entity Framework 4.0 from TechPub. In this production, I'm going to show you Microsoft's latest entry into the data access game, and I'm going to do my best to focus this series on a single theme, solving your data access issues with the Entity Framework. Now, I'll talk a bit about theory and such, but mostly this series is going to focus on code. Well, after, of course, this brief introduction. All right, so back to our question. What the heck is the Entity Framework and why should you care? Well, so far we know that it's Microsoft's current data access strategy and that it's made possible by language enhancements. Well, but what else? At its core, EF is known as an Object Relational Mapper, or ORM. O-R-M. The idea behind ORMs is that they take the tables in your database, churn them through some type of mapping, and then pop out with objects which you can use in your code that are, for lack of better words, data aware. There's a lot more to this, of course, and I'll be showing it to you in the coming episodes, but for now you can think of an ORM as a tool that takes your tables in your database and turns them into classes in your application. Now, it's a neat concept and works pretty well for small data-driven applications, but as systems get larger, problems can creep in. Databases tend to grow over time as businesses grow and become more complex. And if you've been working on the same application over a long period of time, it's likely that your database has grown fairly large, at least in terms of schema. In fact, Northwind, the ubiquitous Microsoft sample database, has grown over time into something that might look familiar to any enterprise developer a hyper-normalized database. As projects grow, they tend to accumulate people with specific interests, and usually one of these people is a database administrator, someone brought in to maintain, secure, and generally love the project database and the data that's in it. These guys are pretty protective of their systems and have a mandate to keep the data clean, which can cause issues when this guy, your boss, needs you to get some work done quickly. You've decided to use an ORM, your DBA has decided to improve your database, you kind of spread out the schema a bit, and all of a sudden, the table as a class idea isn't looking so good anymore. These project forces, time constraints from your boss and process constraints from your DBA, sit squarely on top of a problem with ORMs, a problem with a really weird name. It's called the impedance mismatch. You can think of this as that slight irritation you feel when you buy new boots. Take a long hike, and then that slight irritation turns into unbearable pain over time. It can make you stop hiking altogether. And so it is with ORMs on large projects with DBAs. Well, the good news is that over the last few years, ORMs have become quite capable and have addressed this problem head on, allowing you to stave off many of the pitfalls that you could otherwise fall into. We'll take a look. Well, let's talk to Postgres, shall we? And I can do that. I can say add new item. Going to go through the same sort of thing once again, ADO. Except this time, um, I, did, I couldn't get Northwind inside of Postgres. I think it's got some sort of warning. Look out for Northwind. Um, and instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the world database that I have in Postgres and new connection. Except this time, I'm going to change this to Postgres, uh, Postgres SQL Server. Huh, that's funny. Uh, then I'm going to say localhost. I hit OK. And then, great, world entities, what's what we'll call it, just fine. Uh, but notice this. This is great. This is saying, hey, you know what? We've noticed that the password is embedded in here. Is that okay? And I'm going to say, yes, go ahead, include the sensitive data. Notice that it wouldn't let me go forward. Just kind of a nice little bit of security in there. I like that. So I hit next. It's going to do the same thing, retrieving database information. Great. And the tables in here, pretty easy, city, country, country language. I'll just say include them all, finish. All right, same thing, class diagram. It shows you what you got. Kind of uh, interesting here. So I'm going to go back to program. And instead of this, I'm going to say world entities. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose countries in here. And inside of here, I will choose item dot. Uh, I think it's just name. Yep. All right. So now we hit run. I haven't really had to do much. I'm bouncing around all different kinds of data sources here, but I'm working with it all in a typed way. Over here it helps me debug stuff. Let's take a look at the query that was generated. You gets. Okay, so let me just point out right now that if you send a query like this to your database, your DBA is going to hunt you down and probably do very evil things to you. Um, but if we take a look at this query, we can also see that's why we got that bug. That null was returned because one of these embedded selects didn't fire properly. 
debugging this would be a major pain. But what I can do here is I can do one of two things. I can open up the mapping plan and I can take a look at what's going on in here. And it's not again all that bad, but we've got right outer joins sorted with embedded selects, yikes. So we're gonna run away from this really quickly. Um, the other thing I can do is see the rows resulting from this statement. I can take a look at the data that was being generated. And so if you recall back to what we did with our view, well, that view linked people over, and when we saw the proper results, we didn't get any null returns. In fact, navigation everybody. schemes is probably not your best course of action. All right, well, let's see what we can do differently. Uh, perhaps what I can do in here is to run a join. I can do a join of my very, very own. And to do that, uh, you can bet that link has a join operation. So what I can do is I can say join O in uh, context.orders. And I can specify the join explicitly. I can say on Select. C. So this is getting us one step closer. And so now if I run this, see what we get. And we're close. This is better. We don't have any errors. And if I come down over here, and I can take a look at...